So first thing on the warm-up questions, um, in the diagram points W, X, Y, and Z are collinear. W, X is equal to Y, Z. The length of W, X is equal to the length of Y, Z. So these two pieces are congruent to each other. And X, Y's length is 25. And it says if W, X is a whole number, which is not a possible value of W, Z. So our whole numbers go um, from zero to infinity, counting by one. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and all that. So let's think about this. If WX is an odd number, that means YZ is an odd number. Two odd numbers add up to an even number. Plus 25, which is an odd, gives me an odd number. If WX is an even number, well, that means YZ is an even number. Even plus even is even. And then an even number plus 25 is going to give me odd for my answer. So 30 is impossible for a length of WX. Oh, X, Y is 25. Never. Uh, what is the poss possibility of W, Z? Uh, so 30 is the possibility for W, Z. Impossible for W, Z. Second one, what is the parent, fun parent function for the function shown here? And that is our X squared graph. So um, I am going to add a slide. Um, we are going to get more into these later this year, but I'm just going to draw the parent function graphs really quick. The first one is f of x equals x. This is our linear function. And its parent function is the 45 degree line that goes through the origin. The next function is f of x equals x squared. And its parent function is the parabola that has a vertex at the origin. So this is our quadratic functions. Let me erase that, get the right pin. The next parent function we have looks like this. Looks like the right-hand side of a parabola, kind of. And then the left-hand side goes down like this. Its parent function is y as f of x equals x cubed. This is called our cubing function. And all these things that I am writing on the board right now are the paintings that are above my whiteboards in my classroom. So if we were in the classroom, I'd actually just be pointing to these in the classroom. The next graph that we have for recognizing for parent functions, I call the teapot function. It looks like this. And it's f of x equals the square root of x. This is our square root function. Our next one looks like the square root function on the right and an upside down square root function on the bottom. It's not actually a square roots. This is actually our cube root function. Um, next one will be the last one that I do for right now because the other ones are introduced during Algebra 2. Next one I'm going to do has a 45 degree angle up to the, on the right, 45 degree angle up on the left. Its function is the 
That's the value function. So those are the six um, parent functions that um, you'll probably see in the next several weeks of warm-up activities. Um, and again, the one I definitely need you to have understood is the parent linear function. We are, so in Algebra 1, we do teach quadratics. I mean, in Algebra 1, we do teach quadratics at the end of the year. So I'm hoping that people had this, knew what that one, the U shape one was. But again, after we get done with the review of linear stuff, and we actually get into the Algebra 2 textbook, our next thing is going to be quadratics. So this is just a quick review. Um, if you don't have it already, make sure those are in your notes. I'm going to continue with the burning questions. These notes will be posted so you can go back and backfill them. And, okay, that's good. So the burning questions are 13, 15, 17, 18, and the story problems. That's what you guys typed into chat. So 13, um, I want to pick the equation that's going to be the easiest to solve one of the variables for X or Y without giving me a fraction, and it's the top one. And I'm sorry that they're a little bit fuzzy, but if you have your homework sheet in front of you, you will be able to follow along. I'm going to use the top one. And in order to get the coefficients in front of either X or Y to be a one, well, actually, I, I'm just going to solve one of those for X or Y. So I'm going to just arbitrarily pick to solve for X because either one is going to give me integers for those. So I'm going to move the Y to the other side by subtracting it. Then I'm going to divide everything by two. And now I'm going to substitute. So I'm going to copy the second equation, except everywhere there's an X, I'm going to put parentheses. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to put what X is equal to. So I have negative three parentheses, which gets a negative Y plus three plus five Y equals negative 33. I'm going to distribute negative three times negative Y is a positive three Y. Negative three times a positive three is a negative nine plus five Y is negative 33. I'm going to combine like terms. 8y. I'm going to move the 9 to the other side by adding 9. Negative 33 plus 9 is negative 24. Divide both sides by 8, and I get y equals negative 3. I am then going to back substitute that negative 3 in for that equation, and I get x equals negative of a negative 3 plus 3. Negative of a negative three is a positive three. Three plus three is six. Final answer is six comma negative three. Uh, again, I need to pick the equation that's gonna be the easiest one for me to solve for one of the variables without ending up with fractions. And that is the top equation, solving the top equation for y. So I'm going to solve the top equation for y. I start out with 4x minus 2y equals negative 4. I'm going to subtract the 4x from both sides. That's negative 2y equals negative 4x minus 4. I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. It gives me y equals a positive 2x plus 2. I am now going to write the second equation except for where there's a y, I am going to put parentheses. So 7x minus 5y, and y is 2x plus 2 equals negative 19. I'm going to distribute 7x minus 10x minus 10 equals negative 19. I'm going to combine like terms. 
So I have negative 3x, and I'm going to add 10 to both sides, so that gives me negative 9. Divide everything by negative 3, and that gives me x equals a positive 3. I take that 3, back substitute it into that equation, y equals 2 times 3 plus 2, which is 6, plus 2, which is 8. The answer is 3, comma, 8. Okay, I need to pick an equation that I can solve for x or y that is um, going to leave me without fractions on 17. Um, let me try to get it less fuzzy there. On 17, it's going to be fairly difficult to do that, like impossible. Okay, because I don't have common things in here. So I'm just going to pick one of them and solve it for either X or Y, and I'm going to get forced into fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this bottom one for X. So I have 2X plus 3Y equals negative 4. Move the y's to the other side. I get 2x equals negative 3y minus 4. Divide everything by 2. x equals negative 3 halves y minus, eight, uh, minus 2. I am now going to use the first equation. And everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put parentheses and then substitute in. So four parentheses minus 3y equals 28. In the parentheses, I'm going to write minus 3 halves y minus 2. Again, the same steps. I distribute. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6y. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Minus 3y is 28. Combine like terms, negative 9y. Add 8 to both sides, gives me 36. Divide both sides by negative 9, and I get y equals negative 4. Take this and back substitute it into that equation. So I get x equals negative 3 halves and y is a negative 4 minus 2. Negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12. A positive 12 divided by 2 is a positive 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. My coordinates of my point are 4 comma negative 4. Um, the next one, I'm just going to tell you which one I would solve for first. I would solve for that x first, and then I would continue with these with the same steps that I've been doing. Um, I want to be able to set up the story problems for you and still be able to get today's lesson done. If I have time at the end, I'll go back to 18. 19, a drummer is stocking up on drumsticks and brushes. So I'm going to use a D for drumstick. I'm going to use an S for sticks and a B for brushes. The wood sticks he buys are $10.50 a pair, and the brushes are $24 a pair. So I know that I'm going to have $10.50 times my sticks, and I'm going to have 24 times my number of brushes. He ends up spending $90. on the items. And he buys two times as many sticks as brushes. So the number of sticks I get is equal to two times the number of brushes I have. That's all the work I'm going to do. Because now you have two equations where I can do a direct substitution with 2B replacing that S. So I'll write that substitution step, but I'm not going to do the distribute, solve, and back substitute steps. But that is the setup that you will have for that. Common questions on standardized tests are ones that are set up like this. 
where you'll have a price of one thing and a price of another thing equals the total amount they bought. And then there's some sort of relationship between the two things that they purchased. So, or they'll give you person A bought this group of things for $40, this person B bought another group of things for $80, and then you'll get two equations that we can play around with. 20, mowing and shoveling. Last year you mowed grass and shoveled snow. Um, I'm going to say M is mowing and G, uh, S is shoveling. M and S. I like to use letters that actually help me think through the problem. Um, I showed mowed grass and shoveled snow for 12 households. So the number of grasses I mowed plus the number of things I shoveled equals 12. You earn 225 for mowing a household's lawn for the entire year and 200 for shoveling a household's walk and driveway for the entire year. So it's 225 times the number of things I mowed plus 200 times the number of things I shoveled equals 2,600. Okay. So I answered this one right here, and I answered this one right there. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to solve the top equation for either M or S. So we're going to say solve M plus S equals 12 for M or, not more, M or S. Once you solve that one for M or S, you're going to substitute it into the second equation. You're going to get a number, and then you're going to back substitute. Last story problem. A rectangular hole three centimeters wide and X centimeters long is cut into a rectangular sheet of metal that is four centimeters wide and Y centimeters long. The length of the hole is one centimeter less than the length of the metal sheet. At the length of the hole, X, is one centimeter less than the hole in the sheet. After the hole is cut, the area of the remaining metal sheet is 20 square centimeters. Okay, so what's left? The shaded region. So the area of the shaded is equal to the area of the big rectangle minus the area of the little rectangle. So they're telling me the area of the shaded is 20. The area of the big rectangle is four times Y. The area of the little rectangle is three times X. What I'm gonna do is I am going to substitute into this second equation what X is equal to. So I get 20 equals four Y minus three times what X is equal to. That is the setup. I'm gonna leave the rest for you to do. This one, you're gonna figure out what Y is. And once you know what Y is, you can put it back, get back substituted in that equation. So the big thing that I want you to notice is that if you can easily come up with these, you're doing the same steps over and over again. You're moving everything to one side, except for one of the letters. You're substituting, you combine like terms, move the numbers to the other side, then you back substitute, okay? It takes practice, okay? And again, the work work for the story problems is not hard. The hardest part of the story problems is actually coming up with the equation. So you need to not just skip the story problems and wait for me to come up with the answers in class. You at least need to tr try to set them up, okay? And again, if you take the SAT or the ACT, and for those of you who are juniors or when you become juniors, um, take the Smarter Balance Test. Um, 
they like to have story problems like this that you need to set up and be able to solve. So today we are going to come up with another method for solving systems. Sometimes as I'm going to go back a couple slides. Sometimes it is not convenient for me to um, do the substitution because I end up with fractions. And a lot of people don't like dealing with fractions. So the, the next lessons we're going to do show us other methods that we can use so we don't necessarily end up with fractions or things that are, um, I can do the substitution step, but it would be easier to do another method, okay? And the method we're gonna do start with right now is just by adding or subtracting one of the given equations from another. But in order for me to set up the addition and subtraction, I want to write my equation so like terms are on top of each other. So I'm just gonna show you what I mean by rewriting linear systems so like terms are in columns. I always like to write them in standard form. I like to write them so they're in the form of AX plus BY equals C. So that's what I'm going to do for all six of these equations. I'm just going to write them in that form. So the top one is 8X minus Y is 19. The second one I can rewrite as 3X plus Y equals 7. Again, all I'm doing is rearranging these so the x's are above the x's, the y's are above the y's, and the constants are above the constants. Number two, I would write as 4x, move the y over, minus y equals negative 11. And then I'd write 4x plus 6y equals negative 3. Um, next one, the top equation can stay as it is. The second equation, I need to move the x's over by adding them. And now everything's lined up in columns. And the reason why I do this is now I can just look at these equations and see if I have any things that match. Because our step two is going to be add or subtract one equation from the other so one of the variables is eliminated. Notice in the first group of equations, if I were to add these two things together, 8x plus 3x is 11x, negative y plus y is 0, and 19 plus 7 is 26. So I can add them and one of my variables disappears. Again, on the second one, I, if I add them, the variable's not gonna disappear, but I can subtract one from the other and get things to disappear. So I put parentheses around to remind me to be careful during subtraction. 4x minus 4x is zero, negative y, minus 6y is negative 7y, negative 11 minus 3 is negative 14. So again, I'm not doing steps 3 and 4 yet. I'm just showing you how you determine whether you add or subtract. If you have the coefficients that are the same with opposite signs, you're going to add. If the coefficients are the same with the same sign, you are going to subtract one from the other. So in this case, I'm going to add 9 plus 11 is 20. Negative 2y plus 2y is 0. 5 plus 8 is 13. So for these problems, I have done the first two steps. And once you do the first two steps, you are just going to solve for whatever variable is left. In this case, I'm going to get x equals 26 elevenths. In this one, I'd get y is equal to 2. And on this one, I'd get x equals 13 twentieths. Once you're done with the step 3, you're going to back substitute into either original equation, and then you'll solve for the other variable. Okay, the examples that I'm going to do the whole process on are going to, should not end up with really messy fractions all the way through. Okay?
So step one, I'm gonna rewrite these in standard form. 22x minus y equals negative four. Okay, these are actual problem. Um, again, if you take out the homework sheet, you can be doing them on the homework sheet or you can do them in your notes. I'm gonna have to subtract six X to move it to the left. And then I look at them, same coefficient for the Y's, but opposite signs. So I'm just gonna add the two together. 22 minus six is 16. The Y's disappear and I get negative nine. Solve for X, I get X equals negative nine sixteenths. I'm gonna plug this back into either original equation. I am going to plug it into the bottom equation because it's already solved for y. y equals six times negative nine sixteenths minus five. I'm gonna simplify before I distribute. I know that two goes into six three times. I know that two goes into 16 eight times. I'm gonna have a fraction with eights, so I'm gonna turn this five into negative 40 over 40. I do that fraction stuff before I actually do the rest of the work so that I can actually um, don't have to do it in the next step. So y is three times negative nine, which is negative 27 eighths minus 40 eighths. Negative 27 minus 40 is negative 67 eighths. My answer, it, not square brackets, is negative 9 sixteenths comma negative 67 eighths. And a little messy, but it's, we did solve it. Number five, write in standard form. I'm gonna move the X to the other side. I'm gonna move, actually, I'm just gonna swap sides with both sets of things here. I'm just gonna swap sides. So I get X minus seven Y equals 25. And I have X plus 12 Y equals negative eight. I look at the coefficients that are the same, and that's the ones in front of the X's. They have the same sign, so I have to subtract. X minus X is zero. Negative seven minus 12 is negative 19. 25 minus a minus eight is 25 plus eight, which is 33. Solve for y, y is equal to negative 33 nineteenths. I'm going to substitute that back into one of my equations and uh, it doesn't matter, it's gonna end up with a mess anyway. I'm gonna substitute it into the second equation and that gives me x plus two times, no, 12 times negative 33 nineteenths, I'm substituting into here, equals negative eight. And now we have fun with our fractions. 12 times negative 33. Notice they can't simplify because 12 and 19 don't have common factors. So X, so I get 12 times negative 33 is negative 396. Uh, negative eight, I'm gonna turn this into 19. So negative eight times 19 is negative 152, 19. Add 396 19 to both sides. And I get X is equal to 244 nineteenths. And with the calculators that I gave you to use, um, it, if you do 244 divided by 19, the calculator is gonna leave it as a fraction. 
And that way you know it's as simple as, simple as it can get. Number six, standard form. Top one. Oops. I need to move the y's over, so they're going to be negative 2y. Move the 7 to the other side, so it's negative 7. Move the x's to the left. Y stay where they are. Move the 1 over to the other side, so it's now positive. I'm going to be doing the y's. They have the same sign, so I have to subtract. 3 minus a minus 10 is 3 plus 10, which is 13. Negative 2 minus a minus 2 is negative 2 plus 2. Those go away. Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. X is negative 8 thirteenths. Pick either equation or either original equation to stick it into. I am going to... Um, stick it in the top one. So I get 3 times negative 8 thirteenths plus 7 times 13 over 13 equals 2y. So I'm going to come up with my thirteenths on the left-hand side. That's negative 24 thirteenths plus... 91 thirteenths is 2y. 91 minus 24 is 67 thirteenths equaling 2y. Divide both sides by 2, and I get y equals 67 26. My answer is the x coordinate, negative 8 thirteenths, comma, the y coordinate. 67, 26. So I want you guys to understand that, yes, we are going to be dealing with fractions. Um, if you are not good at them, come in office hours, and we can just do multiple, multiple exercises to get you more comfortable with the fractions. Oops, wrong one. Next page. Um, I got 20 minutes. I don't want to use all of it up. Let's see where we at. Um, I would like you guys to try number 10 on your own right now. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do number 10. So I just created a poll that you should be able to see. Um, when you are actually done, go to the poll and click the word done. That way I can get a count when you guys are getting done with that one. Hold the 
flips the paper. Oh, it's there. Oh, I gotta click launch. So that poll is now live. Where's my meat tab? So, so far I've got one person marked as done. Um, the poll, so if you click the in the top row, if you click in the top row where you, it said, um, so if you close the, Click, if you close the sidebar and then click the top row, there's a thing that says activities. It's got like a triangle, a, rec, a square, and a circle. You click on activities, and then you click on polls, and that's where you can find the poll. So Chase, I want you to find it because that's how we're going to be doing some question answers for multiple choice questions in the future also. We got five. That's a majority of you guys. Okay. Can you explain that again? So, if you have pictures on the right hand side of people, click the X so you don't have pictures on the right hand side. Then on the top, you will have like a button where it says show everyone. You'll have the button for chat. Then the next button says activities. It's got a triangle, square, and circle. You click that. Then it's going to pop out and say meeting details. You're going to click that triangle, square, and circle again if necessary, and then click the word polls, and your poll will show up. This was just added yesterday or the day before, so trying to get people used to it so we can start using it in class instead of me having to create a Google form for anything I want quick answers for. So again, it looks like most people are done. So I'm gonna walk through this one. Step one is already done. They are already um, set up in standard form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the second equation to the first. X minus X is zero, X's are gone. Five minus a two Y is three Y. 28 minus 13 is 15. Solve for y by dividing by 3. y is 5. Put that into either of the original equations. I'm going to put it in the top equation. x plus 5 times 5 equals 28. Distribute x plus 25 equals 28. Subtract 25 from both sides, and I get x equals 3. I now have my coordinates, which are three comma five. Uh, I may come back and do another example. I have some other stuff that I need to cover quickly. And that is the story problem. 
This one is similar to the one you have on your homework. Okay, on the homework, they gave you these questions. I will tell you right now that this is one of my favorite types of test questions. And this is one, the, something moving through the water or moving through the air in two different directions is also an ACT, SAT type question. It says a fishing barge leaves from a dock and moves upstream against the current at a rate of 4.25 miles per hour until it reaches its destination. Okay, so it is going, so I'm gonna put barge plus current is equal to 4.25. That's my first equation. Oh no, upstream, that's minus current. I gotta pay attention. Then downstream at a rate of 9.5. So downstream, the barge plus the current is equal to 9.5. And it wants to know what the speed of the barge is in still water and the speed of the current. So I just take this, I add the two equations together, I get 2b is equal to 13.75, telling me that the barge on its own, if there was no current, would be doing 13.75 divided by two, 6.875 miles an hour. And then I substitute that into either one of my equations. I'm gonna substitute it into the second one. I have 8.75 plus C is equal to 9.5. I subtract the 8.75 from both sides. I got 9.5 minus 8 point, no, it's not 8.75. Helps if you copyright 6.875 minus 6.875, and I get C is equal to 2.625 miles per hour. The reason why these are some of my favorite test questions is because it's really easy to set these up for solving by addition because you're always going to write the equation as like the barge minus the current and the barge plus the current on the left and write the two things that they got when it was um, for the two different speeds there. And then you can calculate. Your homework is 11 to 21 odd, 22 and 23, and that's due Monday, but I still have something else I got to point out. I will not be here Tuesday morning. The following things We'll post in Google Classroom about 8.45 on Tuesday, and to get credit for attendance, you'll need to do the following. There will be three warm-up exercises, just like you've been doing before class. And then there is going to be a quiz thing that's in Desmos, okay? Des and I need you to complete it. If you don't complete it, I need some sort of active work on it. Um, it's supposed to take about no more than 30 minutes. Desmos will tell me if you're actively working on it. And I'm gonna show you the screen. I'm gonna share my computer screen so you can kind of see what you've got to do to get into Desmos. It's not hard. It's, it's not going to regular Desmos, it's going to classroom activities. So I am going to sh um, share my computer screen so you can see it, share now. So when you come into class, on Tuesday, you're going to see this quiz 101A card sort linear systems. Okay. It says click the below link, log in with your school Gmail account, complete the below activity. It should take about 30 minutes and it's going to be a quiz grade. So I click on it. Um, I'm going to sign out as this one. You're going to sign in with Google. In order for you to get credit, you need to sign in with Google. And I'm gonna do it as test student, just so you can see it as a student. And the first time you're coming here, you'll never have to do this step again. You're gonna to have to say, join with Google Classroom, click allow. 
And it says I'm not in the class. So let me uh, add him back to the class. I thought he was already in here. We try it again. I'm going to go back. Click sign out. Sign in with Google. Test student. Join with classroom. I in it. Oh, I've got to accept it. Let me go to Gmail as test student. Go to classroom. Sorry, I thought I already had this guy in the class. I must just have it for algebra one. I'm going to click join. Ooh, he's not even in algebra one. Try it one more time. You guys won't have this issue because you're in a class. Sign in with Google. Test student. Join. Okay. Make sure your real name is in here or you won't get credit. And you click go. So I'm going to just kind of show you what it's asking. So you have six slides to do. Consider the following system of equations. Drag, drag the point to where the solution is. And then tell me how you're thinking. So I'm going to type stuff here. Click share with class. And click next. It says sketch a system of linear equations whose solution is negative 1, 3. I'm going to be a um, bad math student and say negative one is down and the three is over here. So I want to draw a system that goes through that point. That's wrong, by the way. So what I do is I grab my line drawing tool and I draw, let's draw this line. And then I'm going to have my line drawing tool and I'll pick another line that goes through that point. Again, I'm going through the wrong point. You're going to go through the right point and give me two lines. Then what you're going to do is says pair each graph with its solution. Leave the rest of the ordered pairs unsorted. So when I'm asking you to pair, oh, let's say here, I'm saying the purple one crosses at zero, zero. You drag the solution onto it, and then it'll be paired up. So for these, you're just dragging them onto the, the graphs of where they match. One thing, no solutions means the line never crosses. And then there should be one that says infinitely many solutions. That's where you have the same line. So in order to be done with this page, every graph has to have something on it. And the rest are going to be, you're going to have some answers that are floating around. You click next. Tell me which one you're going to use. Substitution, that's what we did the other day. The method we're doing today is elimination. Pick which one you're going to use for which. So I'm going to say substitution. I'm going to say substitution. I'm going to say elimination. I'm going to say elimination. And then it's going to say, why did I choose what I did that way? And then it's, it gives you one, I think it gives you four systems to solve. And you need to drag the X and the Y on the associated system for what the answers are. And when you get all done, you'll have it looking like this, and then you'll be done. Okay, and then I'll get that information as part of your grade stuff. So that's what I need you to do Tuesday. Um, again, that activity should take you um, no more than 30 minutes. So I, more than you should be using your class time on Tuesday, 9 to 10, to be working on.